All right, so this is the uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man number 101 that we cracked out of a CGC slab. It was a 7.5. I was expecting a very high grade, uh, and unfortunately we discovered in one of the other videos that there was some interior staining along um, this edge and really along up the, the open side here. So we're going to try to treat that. I'm going to do some blue LED treatments in addition to that, but given it's a tide line, I thought it would be best to start it out with uh, a little bit of spot hopping. And in particular, because this is on an interior cover, we're going to have to have an approach for that. And so I'm going to give you my uh, biggest secret to how I approach interior covers. And it has to do with uh, another supply you happen to have. So cotton rounds. So what I will do is take uh, the cover and I'm going to open this book just kind of over and across that cotton round. And the cotton round pad there is really just there so that I can move the cover a little bit. Um, while not stressing the staples. So as I do this, you know, the, the cover's kind of free flapping and uh, it gives me an opportunity to kind of support the book on those staples so that I can work on the open edge here kind of without um, risk of tearing a staple. So there, there are other things I'm sure you can use, but I've had the best luck with a simple thing of cotton rounds, which is kind of convenient because you probably have that around anyway. So here's my spot hop mix. This is the 1.5% hydrogen peroxide that I get by mixing store brand hydrogen peroxide. So in this case, I have Meyer handy. Um, I'm going to mix that with just distilled water that I buy from a grocery store. And uh, I'm going to start here. One thing doing these spot hops that you want to be mindful of is do not do huge long sections. Don't wet the whole cover. You will end up with micro creasing and then you will be upset at yourself for the amount of micro creasing that, um, that you caused. So I'm just going to paint that stain and then we're just going to uh, kind of hold the iron over it for about 10 seconds. I'm going to try to be very careful not to, to twist or stress the staples any more than I have to. And if we're really lucky, we'll keep all the black ink on the cover instead of having some ink lift. Uh, color lift on these spot hops is by far and away the biggest, most common source of damage I see when doing stain removal and whitening. Um, and so you want to be very careful. Uh, one of the biggest and most important things to do is to make sure that this dial is at about 1.5. Uh, and I'm actually going to turn that down to be just under 1.5 instead of just over 1.5. And uh, yeah, just get the iron over it and give it a good 10 banana. Yeah, you can try to push it all the way to dryness, but I usually just hopefully you've gotten enough of the stain to either move around or come off when it's still just a little damp. Uh, I find I get a little bit less ink pull and sticking if I don't go too far. Like you don't want to bake the ink into the paper. Um, and I try to keep these to no more than like two or three inch strips at a time. It's also convenient because it's about one iron's worth, so. And I'm really only gonna go over these areas probably two or three times, and then we're gonna go do some of that blue LED work. Um, for this, since I'm fighting a tide line and not foxing, uh, I'm actually gonna use misting instead of the overlays on this one. I find that that works a little bit better when you have these kind of really light, sort of super diffuse tide lines um, to do misting instead of the overlay. Uh, not sure why. I th think it might just be because you get a little bit more water actually on the paper. And I think as that water diffuses as you mist, and then as the mist dries, hopefully it just kind of dissipates whatever is in that tide line and just kind of evens it out and spreads it out and then hopefully you're also kind of bleaching it at the same time and uh, i'm going to not turn the corner so i'm going to go all the way to the bottom of that stain 
on the, the vertical axis here, and then I'm not going to go to the inner edge yet. See, it kind of goes all the way up into here. So this is going to be a little bit of a slow process. In some books, it can easily take half hour or 45 minutes of me doing this. This is one of my least favorite things to do because it's kind of repetitive. It's redundant. There isn't a whole lot of time in between doing each of these applications. You just kind of have to sit here. Usually I... It doesn't look like you always make the biggest improvements or have the you know most crazy outcomes immediately because again the spot hop is not what gets out that last little bit of stain the, the goal here is to get out the first 70 80 90 percent and then i move on to using the blue leds for for the remainder but so far we've been lucky and haven't pulled any black ink and i haven't seen any any micro creases form yet, so this is exactly kind of what we want to do. It's looking a lot better already. As you can see, you know, the cover's wiggling a little bit, moving just a hair, but it's putting very minimal stress on those staples because we've got that cotton roll kind of holding it up and supporting it. Just get a little carried away here. This is probably a longer, longer strip than I should be doing. That's closer to four and a half inches. So again, the more moisture, the larger the area, the hotter the iron, all these things contribute to both color lift risk and micro creasing. Especially if you get a lot of humidity in there and you have a hot iron and you drop it on there, all that paper that is swelled from the water, all that water is going to start to evaporate out quickly, and then all the paper is going to contract in on itself, and that's where you get the micro creasing from. Be very careful with that. This area, I think, was some of the more intense staining, so we're going to do a little bit more here. See if we can go completely undetected on resubmission. Not really optimistic that this book's going to be a high value book when it comes back, but we'll see if we can get a Bumpski just for Bumpski's sake, going from the 7.5. You know, hopefully we can get a 9 or something. There's a little bit of edge wear. I think I noticed that the corner had a little bit more damage. There's a spine tick. Don't think it was quite as high, high grade of a copy as I remembered when I sent it when I came back. It's probably just being overly optimistic when I included it because I love the John Byrne art on this one. It's just so good. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to try to just turn my whole setup here so I can get a little bit better angle on this inside here. I'm just going to do one more actually right down the bottom here. That was the most intense. Husky CGC graders doing their job and checking the interior cover. How obnoxious. So if Matt Nelson's watching, you can congratulate your team. I totally missed that inner staining. I wasn't really looking that hard. I usually tell people I'm not paid to grade books. I'm paid to clean them up. 
definitely I should have paid a little bit more attention to this one. Slide that over the way. Again, we got just a little bit of black ink, maybe transfer. Very sad. The closer you go to the spine, the more careful you have to be. I really like spot hopping the open edge and open edge top and bottom corners. I really don't like getting within a couple of inches of the spine just because your risks of damaging and pulling a staple go way up. I have a couple of tricks for that I'll probably share in a different video should the opportunity arise, but for now I'll be happy this is on an open bottom edge, plenty of space to work. kind of yellowed on the interior. Probably should have whitened this one before I sent it as well. Especially because it's black and white. I really want that cover to pop. very pokey process. I find it does a pretty good job, especially on these super light tide lines. Definitely not a lot of discoloration there. It's pretty minor overall, all things being considered. He's getting there. I'm just gonna dab any place where I can see a little bit of a. I'm not treating the whole area, so I'm gonna think about these as multiple little light spots instead of one big area. line down there so that one needs a little bit more a little bit of follow-up
I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take this as is, uh, and I think it's time to, you know, go get it down in the blue LED light box. Yeah, you can see we uh, didn't do too much ink lift down there. I think some of that was already rubbed off if you look close at the four pictures. Um, and uh, you can kind of see it has that wrinkle sheen. So the wrinkle at least will look better uh, after after the press. So there you have it. All right, everybody, this is a quick check-in here on the Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man number 101 that we were working on. This recently came back from CGC, graded a very disappointing 7.5 with cover staining. And from the exterior, it was very difficult to see what that staining was. But when we opened it up, we noticed that there was a pretty big tide line that went all the way down this white border uh, on the interior cover. And it was the most noticeable on the bottom edge. And so as you see now, uh, after some spot hop and some of these blue LED treatments, that stain is essentially completely removed. Uh, at least there's no evidence of it that I can see here. Um, and in this case, I did the misting method because I think that does a little bit better at dissipating residual staining than the overlay if it is a tide line like this. So um, this one we cracked open, we spot hopped it, and then we did the blue LED misting. And as you can see, it has a pretty noticeable... Um, wrinkle to the cover so that's just a side effect of the process and that'll flatten out there after a final press so this thing um, is ready for for kind of our final workflow um, and hopefully we'll be able to resolve like the spine tick looks uh pretty serious and you know that's probably going to stay and uh overall though i don't think we did too much wear that corner damage I think I had called out in the, uh, the initial video. So that's all good. So um, we'll go ahead and put this one in for a final press now, and then we'll touch base with it after it's all nice and flattened out. All right, everybody, one final check-in here on this Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 101 before we send it off to CGC. So this one had been previously graded at a 7.5, and I was quite disappointed by that because it was marked with interior staining. And uh, as you can see now, this is post-press, so it has, again, that nice sheen as I slide the glare across the cover. The um, inside now is free of that tide line that we looked at originally, so if I get it up in here nice and slow, you can see... There's no more staining across there. And it was really bad on the interior bottom cover. So right there, that looks now completely free of staining. So I think this one will go through free of staining. Um, I'm a little worried about this. I don't know if that was in the original one or if that happened somewhere in the process, but lately CGC has been slamming that, calling it moderate edge wear, even though it's literally just a couple of square millimeters. It's just obvious on the black. Um, and, and then we still have the corner uh, that I was a little worried about. So, you know, originally I was optimistic this thing could get a 9.6. Now maybe I'm less optimistic, but I think I'm going to send it again anyway just to see if we can go by now undetected on the stains that have been removed. So that's all I had for this one. We'll check back in when it comes back from CGC. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the end conclusion here. So this is our spectacular copy of Spectacular Spider-Man number 101. Uh, very famous John Byrne cover. I just love it. I think it looks great. It's, you know, for only being black and white, except for the yellow across the banner there, you truly get the feel of all the different skyscrapers and that black Spider-Man costume just flipping right off the roof. I think it's great. Anyway, I was super disappointed last time uh, when I got this back from CGC because it came back with a reported 7.5 grade with interior staining. And that to me, I just couldn't let that stand. So um, I cracked it out. You were able to watch it all. And now we can see what the final grade here is on this 9.6. So that's what I thought I was actually going to get the first time was a 9.6. And I clearly missed that interior staining. Now it is in fact a 9.6, which I think is a pretty fair grade for it. Uh, I think with this slight corner wear down there, it's never going to be a 9.8. That looks like more than, you know, whatever. But um, that little, little itty bitty corner is going to keep me out of the 9.8 range. Very nice copy. Um, very cool to have it back. This is one heck of a bump there. So 7.5, 8, 8.5, 9, 9.2, 9.4, 9.6. So I'm running out of fingers counting the uh, the bump ski on that one. So that's pretty awesome. Thank you for paying attention. I'm happy you got to see the whole process here on this one. Please leave a uh, like the video for me and subscribe to the channel with that subscribe button. That one's highly sought after. Uh, your attention is appreciated. Take care, everybody.